Hello friends, today's lecture is on sociology and rural sociology, extension education, agricultural extension, meaning and definitions. As the title suggests, this chapter focuses on the meaning and definition of sociology and rural sociology, extension education, agricultural extension. While the former two categories belonged in the discipline of social sciences, the latter two categories are of recent origin and formerly belong to agricultural studies and main objective is to improve the life chances of the rural population. Further, these categories are applied in nature in the sense that although scientific by nature, social dimension has to be understood so as to benefit the larger human society when it engages in agricultural practices. Sociology. As a discipline, sociology arose early in the 19th century in response to rapid social change. Major transformations in the 18th and 19th centuries, such as rapid industrialization resulting in a large anonymous workforce, with workers spending most of their time away from their families and traditions, large-scale urbanization throughout Europe and the industrializing world and a political revolution of new ideas such as individual rights and democracy directed a spotlight on the nature of societies and social change. The French social thinker Auguste Comte first coined the term sociology to describe a new way of thinking about societies as a system governed by principles of organization and change. Most agree that Emile Durkheim, the French sociologist, made the largest contribution to the emergence of sociology as a scientific discipline. Empirical research and abstract conceptions of society were major elements of Durkheim's research. Durkheim's work had a major impact on the discipline both quantitatively and qualitatively. In the 19th and 20th centuries, two prominent sociological thinkers emerged, Max Weber and Jacques Simmel. Additionally, Karl Marx had a major impact on German sociology and on the discipline as a whole. Marx was concerned with the oppressiveness that resulted from industrialization and the capitalist system rather than the disorder of which other social thinkers were reacting. He advocated revolution as the only means to end inequality between the controlling bourgeoisie and the exploited proletariat created by the new industrialized society. The common definition of sociology is that it is a scientific or systematic study of human society. The focus is on understanding and explaining and ranges from individual in social interaction to groups to societies and global social processes. Unique to sociology is its emphasis upon the reciprocal relationship between individuals and societies as they influence and shape each other. However, the definition of sociology according to various authors is given below for better comprehensive understanding. According to John Benedict Chitamber, sociology is the study of human beings in their group relations. As such, it studies the interaction within and between groups of people. Gillen and Gillen states, sociology in its broadest sense may be said to be the study of interactions arising from association of living beings and 
According to Max Weber, sociology is a science which attempts the interpretive understanding of social man. In the above definitions, we notice that sociology is regarded as a discipline that seeks to either discover or address the following tenets of human society. It attempts to discover the principle of cohesion and order within the social structure. It addresses the ways in which such principles of cohesion and order roots and grows within an environment. It attempts to discern the moving equilibrium of changing structure and changing environment as a whole. It attempts to discover the main trends of change which are in season as well as the forces which determine its direction at any time. It attempts to discover the harmonies and conflicts, the adjustment and maladjustment within the structure as they are revealed in the light of human desires. Finally, after discerning and discovering the above tenets of human society, which is constantly under change, Sociology as a scientific discipline focuses on the practical application of means to ends in the creative activities of social men. Now we move to rural sociology. The discipline of rural sociology addresses how communities and areas with few people are socially and economically organized, what patterns of social interaction occur among residents within these areas and elsewhere, and why and how communities change over time. According to A.R. Desai, rural sociology is the study of sociological life in rural setting to discover their conditions and tendencies and to formulate principles of progress. Therefore, rural sociology involves the study of human relationship in rural situations. Rural sociology received prominence in the United States of America following the work of sociologists such as W. E. B. Du Bois and F. H. Giddy. A report by the County Life Commission of USA in 1909, on 12 rural communities pointed to the problem of poverty, crime, population change, and governance that many rural communities were experiencing at that time, and revealed the need for land-grant system to devote social science expertise to solve these problems. In 1937, Rural Sociological Society was founded in USA to promote teaching, research, extension outreach, and spread news about the vitality of rural sociology among the practitioners and others interested in the discipline. During the next quarter century, the importance of rural sociology to the public policy process and programs diminished with the dismantling of New Deal program in the 1940s. Further, many did not favor cultural service within court and did not welcome Walter Goldsmith's study of two rural California communities in 1944, wherein the report revealed that rural well-being was negatively affected by large farms and powerful farmers. Trends of an increasingly more urban and industrialized U.S. population in the post-World War II era were among other factors that contributed to rural sociology's loss of stature. In the last quarter of the 20th century, researchers continued their traditional interest in rural communities, population change, rural poverty, and social inequality. The sociology of agriculture became the new level that drew on this research history. It also stake out new areas regarding the social significance of women in agriculture, 
new biotechnologies, the expansion of industrialized agriculture and agribusiness, and the globalization of agro-industrialized systems. Community and economic development continue to be important research and policy issues that confronted and connect rural communities and rural scholars in the world today. Economic globalization has stressed and challenged rural communities everywhere. While many businesses and manufacturing companies seek out lower cost production areas and lucrative markets, rural communities thrive to find ways to overcome infrastructural, capital, resource, and policy obstacles to promote development and competitiveness. One of the main tasks of rural sociology is to address these issues. Rural sociology is important in India because India is basically a country of villages. After independence, the process of reconstruction of the country was started and therefore the importance of rural sociology was recognized. If India is to achieve progress, the villages have to be improved through imparting education. That is why in community development program, every attempt is being made to improve the villages of this country. This objective can be achieved only when administrators, the planners, have correct knowledge of the rural life. That knowledge can be provided only by rural sociology. Next, we move on to extension education. The term extension education was first used in the United States of America in the first decade of this century to connote the extension of knowledge from land-grant colleges to farmers through the process of informal education. The term community development and extension education became more popular with the launching of community development projects in 1952 and with the establishment of the National Extension Service in 1953. Since then, community development has been regarded as a program for all-round development of the rural people and achieve this objective. In a way, extension education is to teach a person how to think not what to think, and to teach people to determine accurately their own needs to find solution to their own problems and help them acquire knowledge and develop convictions in that direction. In this sense, extension education can be regarded as an applied behavioral science, the knowledge of which is to be applied for the behavioral change of the people. Thus. It deals with various strategies of change in the behavioral pattern of human beings through technological and scientific innovation for the improvement of their standard of living. What is prevalent in India and widely accepted is that extension education is an out of the school system of education in which adults and young people learn. It is a partnership between government, the land-grant colleges, and the people, which provide services and education designed to meet the needs of the people. Thus, it is the dissemination of useful research findings and ideas among rural people to bring out desirable changes in their social and cultural behavior. Next, we move on to agricultural extension. Agricultural extension is the application of scientific research and new knowledge to agricultural practices through farm education. The field of extension now encompasses a wide range of communication and learning activities organized for rural people by professionals from different disciplines, including agriculture, health, and business studies. 
there are four possible combinations, each of which represents a different extension paradigm. First, we can talk about technology transfer. This paradigm was prevalent in colonial times and reappeared in the 1970s when the training and visit system was established across Asia. Technology transfer involves a top-down approach that delivers specific recommendations to farmers about the practices they should adopt. Second is the advisory work. This paradigm can be seen today where government organizations or private consulting companies respond to farmers' inquiries with technical prescriptions. It also takes the form of projects managed by donor agencies and NGOs. Third is the human resource development. This paradigm dominated the earliest days of extension in Europe and North America. When universities gave training to rural people who were too poor to attend full-time course. It continues today in artist activities of colleges around the world. Top-down teaching methods are employed, but students are expected to make their own decisions about how to use the knowledge they acquire. Fourth is the facilitation for empowerment. This paradigm involves methods such as experimental learning and a farmer-to-farmer -farmer exchanges. Knowledge is gained through interactive processes and the participants are encouraged to make their own decisions. The best known examples in Asia projects that use farmer field school or participatory technology development. Agriculture is the mainstay of Indian economy. It sustains over 70% of the populations. Agricultural extension efforts in India have made significant strides towards development of the agricultural sector. The report of the National Commission on Agriculture of 1976 has emphasized the need for massive extension efforts to modernize the outlook of farmers and to make them more enterprising and willing to adapt readily to innovations so that agricultural production could be increased. Agriculture extension is an applied behavioral science, as we have seen above, the knowledge of which is applied to bring farmers or people through various strategies and program of change by applying the latest scientific and technological innovations. Agriculture extension education, its principles, methods, and techniques are applicable not only to agriculture, but also to other sciences like veterinary, animal husbandry, dairying, health and family planning, etc. As an educational program, it has to be undertaken by public agencies to activate the process of transferring knowledge, science and technology from the laboratories to the people or farmer and to help them in farm planning, decision making, record keeping, use of input, storage, processing and marketing to ensure supplies and services, increase their production, develop people and leaders, improve their occupation, family and community life. In conclusion, we can say that sociology, rural sociology, extension education, and agricultural extension as scientific disciplines have been for the betterment of the humanity as a whole. To understand sociologies as a result of modernization and globalization and various other factors. These disciplines are interrelated. Our rural communities continue to suffer some of the common problems they face are poverty, crime, failure of governance, etc. 
to overcome these problems, social scientists and others are expected to contribute their might. As far as extension education and agricultural extension are concerned, as stated above, these are out of school system of education in which adults and young people learn by doing. It is a partnership between government and land grant colleges and people which provide service and education designed to meet the needs of the people and particularly the farmers. Thus, the dissemination of useful research findings and ideas among rural people to bring out desirable changes in their social and cultural behavior is important. <laughs>